Okay, so again, it's going to be a night launch, so sorry about that. Okay. Back to here. So we're going to go for that uh, inclined orbit. And hopefully, do it successfully. So let's launch. I'm really eager to do the moon one. That's what I want. Now that I got maneuver nodes, I think that should really help. So once again, the idea here is we're going for this green orbit. Center this on Kerbin. You want to launch right when that's below. Now last time, I got to go to the north again. I do. Last time I launched 20 degrees north of east and I didn't think that was enough. So I'm going to go another 20 degrees. So we'll launch 40 degrees north of east. So 40 from 90 is 30 degrees. So we're going to launch. That seems a lot. Let's try 35 degrees. And again, this is just guesswork on my part. All right, so we're going to run our orbit program. 35 degrees and 80 kilometers altitude. I just want to make sure that makes sense. So before I did 70, no, it doesn't make sense. What am I talking about? Oh my gosh, that's way too far north. Last time I did 70, I wanted to go another 20. That'd be 50. Oh my gosh. There we go. I think that makes some more sense. Let's see. Boom. It's 34 degrees on the contract. That is 100% right. But we're launching from a latitude of 28 degrees. So it's complicated. The math is not simple. It's all spherical trick and stuff. So I'm just shooting it from the hip. Um, if I was on the equator I would absolutely just be going into a 35 degree inclined parking orbit because we're not on the equator life is just complicated that's just what it is <laughs> so we'll see what we get maybe one day I'll look in the math of all that but right now I'm just kind of shooting it from the hip okay and stage we'll see what we get okay so we are going for this where's our contract this contract once again. This time I do have the mystery goo aboard. Fortunately, the mystery goo does not have any transmittable science in Kerbalism. You have to return it. So there's no science to collect, so I'm not even going to bother turning it on. I have collected the mystery goo in space near Earth, but I haven't done it in high space. But I'm not going to this time either. This is my designated orbit. There we go. Okay, about to lose the next boosters. Alright. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Tyler's just saying, spherical trick, yucky. Just just strap on some extra boost. And that's what I'm actually doing. I'm, I, you know, the, this thing seems to have a lot of delta V. So I'm not making any modifications. I'm just going for it and hoping, hoping I can get her done. Okay, we are at our 80 kilometer orbit. How did our inclination, how does the inclination look? like? That's not bad. Now I went, I went a little too far north. So you can see my blue line there. And you can see it's inclined a little bit too far to the north. So last time I went a little bit too far south. This time I went a little bit too far north. But now I have, oh my gosh. Time to Apoapsis and all of that wonderful stuff. That's exciting. I can make maneuver nodes. Oh. Oh. Still don't have SAS or anything like that, but, you know, one thing at a time. Okay, we're going to lose our fairings. Deploy our little antenna. All right, so 50 seconds from Apoapsis. I don't need that Kerbal Engineer chip now. Uh, 
Now I want to go a little bit to the south, see if we can pull our inclination southwards too, but to be honest, probably shouldn't worry too much about it because it'll be cheap to make the inclination change out there. That's really kind of more the idea. So watching my time to Apoapsis, not letting it get too low is really the idea of all this. Much, much easier than guessing. Oh, oh, SAS, SAS. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting I have SAS. Silly. More thrust. Reduce throttle now because I'm noticing my time to apoapsis is actually going up. And this time I'm not going to do, I'm just going to go for an 80 by 80 orbit. There we go. Um, and use maneuver nodes. No more guessing at this. So there's my little orbit. Uh, let's get rid of all the other satellites so that they're not distracting us. I mean, it's not, it's a little bit off, but it's not terrible. So there is my target. Um, I should be putting the node, my maneuver, right where, yeah, it's got a descending node right here. So I'm only 11 degrees off. So I want to be right around here for my maneuver and pushing it out towards that. A N because that's going to be where I'm going to make my plane change. So do that. Oh, this is so sweet. Maneuver nodes. What a concept. Okay. So just like that, but it's only going to be an 11 degree plane change and it's going to be way out there. So, and I'm just again, eyeballing that. A little less. That's 4.07, and this one's 4.2, and this one's 4. That seems reasonable. Okay. So, I've got a 735.1 meter per second burn, and it is an 18 second burn, and it's coming up in 10 minutes. So, I'm going to stop quite a bit early. I do have to watch... my solar exposure but right now it's saying perpetual which has got me pretty happy I want to start early because it's going to take me some time to kind of maneuver this into position Yeah, I could turn the SAS off, but it's it, the electricity is perpetual, so I'm leaving it. And I'm wondering if the SAS, although physically it shouldn't matter, it has something to do with the fact that this doesn't seem to be tumbling like my other rocket. Well, that makes sense that, yeah, it's because I'm not, yeah. It makes sense that it doesn't tumble like my other rockets because of the SAS. Uh, let me let me get me pointing in the right direction and I'll, I'll explain. Okay, off. Let that move across. Oh, no, it does stop. Okay. SAS off. Okay. Let it cut over there. It does seem to stop tumbling if I time warp with SAS on. I don't think it should, but it seems to. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to get myself around that prograde vector. I can see there's a staging event right at the end of this. There's my maneuver node. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. And I don't know, we'll see. I might not wait to the actual start burn in pit. Just kind of just. Oh, because my throttle is so low, all of a sudden it's going, oh, it's going to take you forever at this throttle. Yeah, I just want to get around where the pro where the vector is thank you very much <gasps> okay, SAS on 
Okay, so if I cut throttle, there we go. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a little early, just because I know it's gonna be um, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of fiddling with it. There we go. Oh, this is great. Oh my gosh, maneuver nodes. Maneuver nodes. Okay, we're going to get a staging event right around here. I might cut my throttle. Oh, oh, that was... And then, and then... <laughs> a little bit ugly. A little bit of ugly on the separation there, but we're going again. Is it 4.1-ish? Something like that. Let me take a look. Let's get rid of this. How's that look? I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a maneuver way out here. My electricity still says perpetual, so that has me happy. Uh, we're going to do some prograding. We're going to do some normalizing. You want to combine these two burns. So the whole, this little bit of a inclination change is really not going to add too much to it um yeah and then it's really you know it's sort of funny if if you see an argument of the periapsis here that means you need to get this periapsis onto that actual periapsis but i do not see that argument of the periapsis so all i need to do is get the inclination right which i can do just with with eyeballing it and get the periapsis and apoapsis right. So the periapsis and apoapsis, uh, 4.07, so a little bit more. I see 4.076. I got 4.078 and 4.2. Okay, so that's a little bit, a little bit more on this. But then 4. Point, yeah. It's probably close enough. But if you want to adjust them even further, like for instance, if I want to bring this periapsis down, then what I need to do, because my altitude here is higher than there, is I need to push this periapsis away from me. And I do that by burning radially outwards. So if you want to add a little bit of radially outness, and I'm lying, it goes the other way. No, radially inless pushes the periapsis away from you. Yes, that makes sense. Either way, uh, so if you want to dial that periapsis right to 4.077, I'm actually really, you can do it just with the radial parts. It's going the wrong way again. 4.07, see that's really close there, right there. And then if you want to, you can dial in the parrot. Now notice my apoapsis isn't high enough. And again, I'm going to emphasize, I'm pretty sure I'm more than close enough. But my apoapsis isn't high enough, so I need to put a little bit more energy into the orbit. And then I need to do the same thing I did before. Bring that periapsis down to about 4.76. And then look at my apoapsis. It's pretty darn close. So you can adjust like every pyameter. Pyameter pi 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 is a word. No, every parameter, you can adjust it just with the right things. But I think that burn will do it. And it's only 446.4 meters per second. So I'm going to just go a little F5 here. And um, let's actually use alarm clock to time warp out there. My electricity still says perpetual, so that makes me happy. I'm not going to use... That's not what I want. Alarm clock, that one. I'm not going to use this warp too because that stops me a minute before and I'm not convinced I'll be able to turn around in that amount of time. But I can use this and gay stop me like three minutes before I hit that maneuver. Like that, okay. Why is there no warp two? Is that in the settings? Usually there's a warped, like a button here. To... How do you get into the... Settings. I, I like to have a warp two button. I always thought there was a warp two button. Maybe they changed something. I 
Ah, uh, whatever. Okay, we'll just, we'll just, it should stop. So say goodbye. Oh, there is no warp two control in KSC. I might be just thinking of the stock alarms or something, just getting mixed up with something else. Thank you. I mean, it's going to stop anyway, so it's not like it's a big deal. We can take in the view a little bit. I'm watching my electricity. That's the thing I'm the most paranoid about, but without the tumbling, it's just not happening. So the alarm is just about to go off. I'm three minutes away from my burn. Okay. De delete that alarm. Get rid of alarm clock. And I can probably now, now I can make my own decision. I'm going to go a little closer. My signal's good. Communications are good. I'm kind of happy that I don't have to worry about ground stations now. Okay, minute and a half. All right, so got to give myself a teeny amount of thrust just to get going in that direction. I'm going to take SAS off so it'll tumble. There we go. We get going in that direction. Here's my maneuver. Oh, and I'll just watch this. Okay. And put on SAS. Get a little bit of throttle there. So just right on to, I can control it. You don't need SAS. There we go. A little closer. And again, I'll probably start a little early. Out here, the t you know, uh, timing's not that big a deal. But basically, I'm not going to watch the maneuver as much as I'm going to watch this. When this contract goes green, then I know I got it. Okay, let's go. We'll go most of the thrust. Most of the thrust. There we go. Well, this is working out pretty well. Considering this was mostly done shooting from the hip. As it were, might make me brave enough to try that other go into an equatorial uh, one. Probably isn't too bad. Okay. And actually, if I hit the warp to while. The alarm clock was active it would have stopped me three minutes ahead anyway i could have used that button okay so now i'm just going to lower my throttle because i'm getting very close and i'm just really watching this as soon as this goes green i'm going to cut oh it did go green i didn't even notice <laughs> i was waiting for these blue to compare but it's this one and then there's the old maintain stability for 10 seconds which i find actually kind of funny like i guess that you didn't somehow fluke into that. Beautiful. Oh, that is like 125 curb bucks for that contract. That has got me excited.